Thank you, Madam President. Colleagues, I rise in support of Senate Bill 52, which comes from your Senate Education Committee on a 5-0 vote. It's known as Addie's Act and ensures that every school district in the state of Oregon puts in place a comprehensive suicide prevention policy and plan. We are in a crisis in Oregon. Every three days, on average, we lose a young person to suicide. The statistics speak for themselves. Suicide is now the second leading cause of death for Oregon youth, and tragically, it is on the rise. And regarding this bill, Oregon is one of three states without a statutory requirement for schools to have suicide prevention plans in place. We know that local examples exist. Lines for Life, partnering with the Willamette ESD, have resources that aim to reduce youth suicide and build awareness for mental health and wellness. The bill itself does have an emergency clause, and it allows the Department of Education the opportunity to work on notification to school districts of this policy change. However, the requirement for plans will not have to be formally adopted until the 2020-2021 school calendar year. The School Boards Association supports the bill, and I do not believe we can wait one more day to begin this work. In committee, there was some good conversation about the need for specifying attention to certain specific student populations. And let me be clear. The plans that school districts would adopt would impact and address the needs of all students. But the data is also clear that certain populations are at even higher risk. This includes youth bereaved by suicide, with disabilities, mental illness, substance use disorders, youth experiencing homelessness, or in foster care and our LGBTQ youth. Nearly half of LGBTQ 8th graders have contemplated suicide. It's three times the general population, and almost a third of transgender 8th graders have attempted suicide. As we know in this building, behind every statistic is a story. Behind these statistics are too many youth who have been lost in this tragic struggle. In committee, we heard from the parents of Chloe Wilson, a teenager who struggled with mental health, and in fact, she had testified in the Oregon legislature a year before her death about the need to have increased mental health supports in our schools. We also heard from Lon and Christine Staub about their daughter, Addie. They're joining us today in the gallery. I want to thank them for their willingness to share Addie's story despite their heartache and their courage to help us make this change. I want to share some of their testimony here because I believe it is important that we learn from their experience. Addie Staub came out as a transgender girl after her sophomore year in high school. Her parents tell us she was excited for her future which gave her courage to bravely share her truth to her classmates and her community. When she returned to school, she found that some friends and teachers accepted her and generally cared for her well-being. However, there were many more classmates and teachers who misgendered and misnamed her, sometimes intentionally and repeatedly. She experienced the crushing loss of friendships and felt marginalized. After being a straight-A student, Addie failed in school. With each act of aggression or ambivalence, she lost more and more hope and fell into depression. Until 18 months ago, just two years after her joyful transition, Addie took her own life. In this state, this session, we're working on comprehensive efforts to address suicide prevention, including interagency coordination. We'll hear from Senator Gelser and Senate Bill 485 today, and resources and supports for school districts to promote safe schools and bipartisan efforts to tackle bullying and harassment. 
Senate Bill 52 is part of that vital conversation and an important step forward, but not our only step in preventing youth suicide. Today, I ask for your support for Addie's Act to work to save lives and ensure that all kids see a future for themselves in Oregon. I just wanted to thank the Staub family and the hundreds of parents that share their grief and their struggle in order to help us understand the need for public policy. We stand with you ready to help make a difference in the lives of young people in our state. Thank you.